So we open with Porsche's social justice. But on a lighter note, now we have Kenya with her sissy. He, he's always virtual. He ain't never showing up ever since Apollo topped him. Ooh, Drew, them pancakes he was making was way too light skinned for me. So now we got the mom-in-law getting in their marriage. Oh, th th really? We're eight minutes in and this is what you have to offer on the third episode? It really is over. So now we got Toya dropping by Kenya's. Toya wants to get Kenya on a dating site and she ain't even divorced yet. But then again, she's not married, so it's appropriate. So Kenya brings up the cat wig that Drew had on and Drew's like, yeah, you know, I get, I'm not a wig girl. I get you need a wig sometimes, but know how to apply it. And Kenya said, well, that's fair. They just shamed the heck out of her. She said, let's call a wig a wig, but that's a pet on your head. And you called it macaroni. This is boring, so Kenya's saying she getting divorced. Okay, we knew that. Drew can't seem to keep her man either, and now we're taking photos for dating sites. So now we have the girls having an outdoor workout at Candy's. So we talking about our quarantine weight. So now we getting an update on Cynthia's wedding at 250 people. Oh, Candy, I like this green confessional look. This is the nicest I've ever seen you look in your life. You look adult and sophisticated. So Cynthia ain't done the prenup yet, but you know she got burned by Peter before, so they getting that nup. Okay, now we got Portia and who this pulling up at Tanya's. Tanya, where'd you get this baby? So it's so weird to see everybody with face masks but hugging in a car with closed windows. It's so much defeating the point and the purpose, but okay. They probably attested. They tested them all the time, so it's safe. Oh, we got Portia's sister in the car. She had a mask on. That's why I didn't know who it was. Portia said quarantine started out like a honeymoon and then ended in divorce five months later. But you was girl, I don't even think y'all quarantined together. You had been over him. You got your baby and bounced. So we're going to Fallon's house? Fallon from Dynasty? That's the only Fallon I know. Fallon Colvin. Okay, she got a rich African husband. He seemed interesting. I wonder if they're going to be friends of the show. The house is nice, but it looks a little empty, but we didn't see that much of it. I just like a little art when I come in, and it was just a little cold. She talking about how tight she is. In her first scene, a wop hole. A wop hole. Okay, girl. Child, so they fighting over hole size, then they all end up in the pool. I hope that water was warm. That pool is nice. Their house is nice. I love that setup. Is that, is that a hot tub off to the side or is that just storage? Child, Portia Luther King is giving us a speech in this hot tub on the hookah. Oh Lord, this fight with Drew and her husband over the house. I just get scripted from them. I just feel like they took some Tyler Perry situations and, and they're trying to give themselves something to talk about. I'm responsible for the business. You're responsible for the packing. He said, he said, oh, he didn't say nothing I cared about. And you've been with this fool for six years. Y'all could have gone on the Yonla for this. Oh, Lord. Now he's whining about the counselor saying they've got to buy jeans. Oh, girl, either leave him or leave this plot line alone. You couldn't have come up with something more interesting than this. It's a beautiful house, but a horrible union. So now we have Cynthia and Mike Hill looking at wedding venues. Girl, this is a nothing episode. The computer froze and I was like, oh, it's quiet. That's how boring it was. So since that little four minute review wasn't shit, we gonna go back to season four, episode 11, when the show was good and Nene was only on her second nose. Back when they knew how to work it and be seen. Uh-uh, we ain't gonna start the episode off with Grand Dragon Zolciak. Mute and Best Fiend. Oh, I didn't even finish the episode. Well, I did finish it, but for some reason it didn't tape. It was just Cynthia whining about this wedding and Mal and Will looking at her, Will, Hill, whoever, looking at her like she was crazy. I think she crazy because she taking them sundress and stitching them back together rather than just going up the size. You don't, you got money, girl. You ain't gotta be patchwork. You ain't gotta be a patchwork heifer on TV. Since Nene wants us to boycott Bravo, I'ma go watch these old episodes as a special fuck you to her. All right, now we've got Cynthia going out with Peter. Oh, Cynthia looks nice and Peter looks like crap. Oh Lord, it's a double date with Apollo and Phaedra. 
so they can make up after their little scuffle. <laughs> Cynthia gonna raise her glass and say, to the husbands and the wives at this point, I guess we're the last four standing. And boom, y'all got knocked down real quick. Those were two marriages hanging on by a thread, just flapping out there. Then with some wing and a prayer marriages or wing and a prison sentence marriages, whatever you want to call it. Apollo said he was doing asset recovery. He just didn't say whose assets he was recovering. Cynthia said, is he a repo man? No, he's a thief. A thief. T-H-I-E-F, thief. Cynthia, this wig you got just sitting up on your head, this bang ain't for you, you. Oh, she's organizing the trip to South Africa. Okay, Birdman hand rub. I I'd rather relive this than watch what's new. So, child, Cynthia can't get good out the restaurant before she call her boss, Nene, to let her know what's up. All right, this is when Nene had a plot line and was developing businesses with that John guy. She gonna say, Donald Trump introduced me to John, and you act just like him. Just as stubborn, just won't let the past go, just as ignorant. And now that I look back at it, he was buying her stripper heels just from Louboutin. Oh, she was supposed to have a lounge way back then. See, you should have followed through with that. If you had had that lounge, you might not be begging for a job today. Oh, goodness. Nene said she wants a fabulous lounge that appeals to executives that make 200000 and up. That's not your brand, though. Your brand is a nice place where ladies can gather, get a glass of wine. Maybe you could have, like, a party room for bachelorette parties to bridal showers. Um, but I would say you would want that, that mid tier. You would want the fans to be able to afford it, but you know, high end on a budget. And when you starting out, I think you want to start out like Candy. Now I'm sure Candy could do something high end, but she's got her store and you ain't known for your cooking or for your fabulousness or for your decorating skills or for your fashions or for your makeup or for your hair. So here he go giving her some more whole heels after they seal the deal on the lounge that will never be. Now we never put your feet to the fire over that, but you were Sheree Whitfield. She said he knows a lot about business and I can learn a lot from him. Well, you didn't. So Phaedra and Candy are going to an African dance class. I'm gonna do that when the world goes back to normal. So after class, Candy shows Phaedra all of Marlowe's mugshots and says, we going to Africa with this heifer? It's sad we got to go back four seasons to get an interesting episode. They just should have reran this. Oh, God, Kim, I got to mute. Best fiends. That you <laughs> Is she in that brassy, pissy yellow wig? You know she is. But back with Phaedra and her felon. Oh, no, she's with Sheree who's also no stranger to fraud and a bad check herself. Child, this is when Phaedra was trying to give us her whole, we should know our history, but then you fawning over the damn mannequins. Mannequins turn you on, Phaedra. Ooh, you a mess. So Phaedra gone say, Sheree, would you come on this trip to South Africa if Nene came? Of course, she doesn't have a job. Child, we got Phaedra on the phone with the president of Ghana. Now, they went to South Africa. They didn't go to Ghana. So who thinks this was um, her calling one of her cousins? This was probably Apollo disguising his voice. So Candy, again, uses her mama to do her dirty work to try to get the girls to act right. Rather than you try to get everybody together and have them get mad at you, you're like, I'll use Mama Joyce as a shield. Can't nothing get through that wig. She's like, I'm not trying to run the clubs with you girls. I don't know why. You can put your kitten heel on and get your strut going. Mama just going to say, I want y'all to be how you used to be. When were you with them? To know how they were. Because they were never anything before this show. Then she going to pull the elder card. When I see y'all here and you're together, I want y'all to speak. Nene, say hey to Kim. So everybody gives a forest dry hi. Oh, goodness. So Nene ain't going on the trip. Why? Kim ain't going. So half of Joyce keep pushing Nene to be friends with Kim, and Nene's like, I don't want to talk about this no more. So everybody leaves, and Kim and Sh Nene's like, I'm done with Kim and Sheree, and Kim is done with Nene, and half of Joyce, you was just drunk and messy, as usual. Don't grab my pussy, don't grab my pussy. 
I'm your cameraman. I don't want to be anything more to you. I swear, don't grab my pussy. I'm not attracted to you. You look like Yoda and the Gullah.